we are talking health and well-being. And tonight, uh, for the well, in fact, for quite a bit of the programme, we're talking sort of mental well-being and mental health. Joining me now in the studio is Andy Pritchard and David Fields from um, Mind in Somerset. So, um, welcome, guys. Thank you very much for coming in. Hello. 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 Uh, Hi. So, tell me first of all, because it used to be two separate organisations in terms of places in 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 terms of Mind in Somerset. You've merged, haven't you? Which was just before yeah. Christmas. So we, we've become uh, Mind in Somerset um, back in October. Um, we were uh, two two separate charities, both working towards similar sort of goals and aims around mental health and it just made sense to come together to pool our resources but I guess the, the primary focus was really to offer a broader service across the whole county and make sure more people could get access to our support. So Andy, but quite often when you hear people say they've merged services it means they've they've cut services or they've had funding cuts. Not the case? No, absolutely not. There's not been any redundancies, there's not been any service service cuts. It's all been about sort of bringing, bringing more central resources together so that we can be more efficient we can fundraise we can do activities that we need to do as as one but also strategically look at where are areas actually in the county that don't have as much provision and what can we do as an organization to start making sure that provision happens so in terms of your specialism what 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 area do you deal with um so i I've been involved in mine for quite a number of years and do all sorts of different things. Helpline training, we provide advocacy, we provide one-to-one support, quite a broad range of things. And, and peer support's the other thing that we're, we're really keen on and making sure that people, wherever they are, have something that they can go to on a sort of support and social basis. You say you've been working in, in kind of this field for a, a long time. Does it surprise you how much probably in the last, I don't know, five, maybe six, seven years that mental health has become quite top of the agenda, not just in the media in terms of coverage, but also in terms of work life? We talk a lot about work life balance. We talk a lot about um, wellness at work and, you know, all those things looking after ourselves. It seems to almost have mushroomed. I think I think. The reality is, is that our well-being and our mental health is integral to everything that we do in our daily lives. And I think what, what the discussion over the last few years and has been very much about starting just to think. Actually, we all need to be able to look after our well-being. We we've perhaps there's been stigma, there's been discrimination historically. There's starting to be an evolved discussion on. That. I mean, actually, another one of the projects we run is the Time to Change project, which is all around challenging stigma and discrimination. And I think we. We've, we've seen nationally, the, the Time to Change uh, programme nationally, seen a 6% positive change in public attitudes around mental health. And that's shown by the conversations that people are happier to talk about. But there's still work to be done. And certainly workplace well-being and, and just being able to have a conversation. Actually, I'm not feeling so great. What's that about? What can I do? And how can workplace, how can other parts of my life support that so that we do get that balance right and do you think it's it's also helped by the fact that that like the young royals you have the the duke and duchess of cambridge and, and uh, a duke and duchess of sussex as well you know joining together that, and they talking about their own sometimes struggles with things as well um, do you think that helps especially with the younger generation I think, I think their their whole heads together campaign has been really positive in opening up discussion because if, if you see uh, you know them being able to talk openly about experiences which you know their lives are documented they're they're very much in the public eye it, it's only a positive thing to help other people think well actually this is something that I can talk about and and often um, it is for I think those those public figures if they can speak openly then it does help others feel maybe this is something that I can talk about and also that sense of not being alone sometimes mental health and sort of poor mental health can be quite isolating and so people can be um, encouraged to, to talk and open up What I also find fascinating as well is, is the, the fact that it's everybody a lot of people seem willing to talk about it so whatever age or gender or race um that there seems to be much more openness like you were saying um and i had on the program a couple of weeks ago a young girl who does karate and um she's only 12 years old she was very just um 
very clear in, in what she was saying, how karate has helped her and all this, and actually that when she was about nine, that she um, had found that she was full of anxiety and was very stressed by all these sorts of things and that, that karate, doing something like karate, helped her and gave her confidence and she helps other people now and all those sorts of things. Um, I don't think I knew what anxiety and stress was at the age of nine. And is it because life has changed and it's much more the social media aspect and all those sorts of things. I think it's, a, it's an interesting one and we do a, a mental health first aid training and one of the topics that we talk about is actually how many people on that course was mental health ever talked about at school and actually it's only when you start to get to people under the age of 20 where it's even only just starting mm. to come onto the agenda and so I think, I think probably if you speak to older adults it was there, but it wasn't talked about or it was branded something different. It was kind of a bit more hidden, whereas we're more prepared to talk about it. I think people are more self-aware and, and I think there's a lot more stuff starting to happen around prevention. But again, it's within our schools, within our education settings, our young people, that we, we do need to keep that conversation going and find confidence building activities to turn people's anxiety into something actually I've got an activity that's really mm. helped me now I think it's amazing that there is there is a lot of help out there but it's actually people knowing where that help is and, and accessing it as well and we'll come on to that more a bit later and we're also David going to talk fundraising yeah so um I, I kind of I suppose I don't ever really sometimes think how do all these charities and things actually there's so many charities out there trying to raise funds mm how difficult it can be mm -hmm. and how much support you do need and, and i'm guessing you need a lot of financial support yeah well, we um we're, we're affiliated to national mind based up in london but we don't actually receive any funding from them to deliver the services that we're delivering here in somerset so we have to raise all our own funds to do that wow so um, we it, an organization yours like yours must cost a lot of money to keep going can you put a figure on it? Can I, figure I on mean, it? I think so. Sort of our our turnover is about three hundred and fifty thousand yeah. pounds a year. Um, the costs actually we try and keep to a minimum because most of that turnover money that's in direct project delivery. Yeah. Often the challenge is is we can get funding for projects, but that's just for the delivery of that specific project. And then it's how do you keep your core part of the you know rationale behind the merger was actually if we can bring some of our central costs together then we can be more economic in our delivery so yeah. is it your job david to come up with lots of ideas so, <laughs> <and> <laughs> yeah try to so we, we derive funding um in in two ways really two distinct ways one is through applications to grants so like and trust like big lottery funding and things like that for for big projects but then what I'm trying to focus on is the community fundraising part and getting local businesses and local people in the community to fundraise for us and to make the point to them that actually the fundraising that they do for us and the money we get from them goes straight into the charity, yeah. straight into delivering the services. Um, and I think, not, and I certainly didn't before I joined Mind in Somerset, know the difference between national mind and, and local minds and how they work. It's the local minds that deliver the services. And so that's, you know, where the fundraising effort uh, goes into. We don't receive funding from National Mind. And I think people will be surprised to know that you don't receive funding from National Mind as well, you know, because I think it's an automatic, you're, you know, part of the same organisation yeah. or delivering the services. So why wouldn't, you know... So in terms of the fundraising that you have to do, it it's continual. It's continual. Um, we, we have several strands to it. Um, uh, a, a, a lot of uh, local people come to us and say that they want to raise funds for us through various activities. Um, we're also trying to develop corporate partnerships with local businesses as well to become their charities of the year, um, as well as hopefully delivering training to them in mental health and well-being at the workplace. Um, and um, we're organizing events of our own as well. Uh, this year you've got lots of them coming up in fact yeah. um uh, lots and lots of them including you've got a dragon boat race is that right that's yeah, in so may we, we, we slip across the border <laughs> just into dorset in uh, to the sherburn castle Sherbourne, yeah. yeah to sherburn castle fair we've been doing this for last i think it's two three years something like that um and a big country fair and we have a dragon boat race and we have a team of about 20 people and we do three races and we try and paddle as fast as we can which is not never fast enough uh, but that usually raises about three, three and a half thousand pounds for us. But our, 
our big flagship event is coming up in July on the 6th of July, which is the uh, Driving Challenge and Family Fun Day at so, Fensbridge Gerfield. <laughs> so tell me what the Family Fun Day is, the Driving Challenge. What is it? Well, we ran it for the f- first time uh, as this particular organisation last summer uh-huh. uh, up at Fensbridge Airfield. And uh, this year we're opening it to about 160 entrants can, can, can enter. And uh, basically, you can come along and drive uh, vehicles ranging from articulated lorries down to forklift trucks and everything else in between. <laughs> so uh, at the moment, I'm busy trying to procure from local uh, uh, local transport companies uh, and lorry companies, etc., uh, vehicles to drive uh, there. Each person will be able to drive at least three vehicles, um, and then there'll be other things for children and families to do in a sort of static display area. And um, you'll be awarded points, and points mean prizes. <laughs> My eyes have lit up because I <laughs> I love driving and um, I've always wanted to be able to drive a, a lorry, an HGV. Always wanted to be able to drive it. It was the most popular vehicle last summer was people wanted to get into an HGV. And I, I, I managed to get into one. It's, it's blooming great. <laughs> <laughs> Is, I don't know what it is. I think it's um, that whole thing about being up above everybody yes. else as well. Yeah. Um, I, I just... I don't know. I've always, I just think it's amazing. And I know that when I've, I've been in America a couple of times, a long time ago, seeing these amazing 18-wheeler trucks behind you, which look quite fierce and quite mean in America. Yeah. But um, HGVs, I do a lot of driving, a lot of driving, and I like driving. Yes. Forklift trucks, I have to admit, I might have done a little bit when I was younger because my dad used to drive them. So oh, okay. um, many years ago, before health and safety, um, I might, when he was going and sort of helping tidy yeah. things up, I'd sort of ride on the side of it and sit with him but well, I, we, we what should, a great we, we, well, idea we should have a, uh, combine harvesters there and oh. tractors uh, even uh, uh, county council are hopefully going to provide like they did last year a couple of road sweepers which he thinks <laughs> too slow <laughs> no, well they're, they're very complex bits of kit actually they're, they're really really interesting <laughs> tell me about it. i spent about 15 minutes behind one the other oh, okay. day <laughs> <laughs> um i i like that idea but, I, they, um, but, the, but the prizes are going to be pretty good you can you know get a flight in an aircraft that afternoon from the airfield or you get yeah, a tour of the that. aerial motor company <laughs> down in uh, krukan as well uh, oh, amazing so, um, some good prizes and lots for the children to do as well as what we're planning So how do you get the points? Is it Could you have to go around a course? You're scored on your technical abilities uh. to drive the vehicle. <laughs> it's, it's very... Um, it's a bit of fun. <laughs> it's a bit of fun. <laughs> but there's a score sheet involved. <laughs> yeah. um, and so in terms, of, in terms of there must be a cost to, to enter, that's how you raise the money as well? Yeah, so we're charging this year, we're charging £30 to enter, but that includes... Uh, uh, Mind and Somerset Driving Challenge t-shirt uh, and a medal as well. Uh, everyone gets a medal. Prizes for everybody. Um, and uh, we're also asking for people who do enter to try and raise at least £50 each through sponsorship. But there is a prize also for the person who raises the most money through sponsorship being sponsored uh, to do that as well. Um, lots of things means prizes. That's good. Yes. And in, t- in terms of how people sign up, do they yes. go to your website? Go to the website or to Full On Sport. Um, and um, there's a link there, Mind in Somerset Driving Challenge and Fun Day. But there's also a link on our website and on our Facebook page as well. So, so. I, I, I have never seen a driving challenge like that. I think that's. A, well, we'll I, see you there, no matter. Yeah, we, well, if, if it's, is it a Saturday? It's, it's a Saturday, Saturday, isn't it? It is a Saturday. I Lovely like afternoon that watching idea. aircraft taking off, driving lorries. Yeah, Lovely as long better. as it put me in an aircraft, I'll be fine. I don't do <laughs> I don't do anything that goes that far above the ground. Um, but it's what a great idea. And do do you get taught to drive the vehicles? So when you we, we, yeah, before you set off on <laughs> driving your HGV, they don't articulate just like put you lorry. in one and let no. you go. <laughs> so you, you'll have a qualified driver obviously next to you, and uh, you get in. You have four or five minutes sort of brief on on all the, all, all the knobs and buttons, and then off you go on a little circuit that we've got going around the airfield. There's also an off-road section to the airfield, actually, and we're going to have some off-roading um, vehicles there as well. So it should be good. I, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely sold on this idea. Uh, we'll talk more about fundraising and also about the organisation and what you do. Uh, that's coming up in just a couple of minutes' time. For the moment, thank you. It's uh, BBC Somerset. It's Trish with you through until 10. Uh, my guests this evening for the first part of the programme, Andy Pritchard and um, David Fields from Mind in Somerset. Uh, and it's Mind that has merged from the two, from uh, South Somerset Mind and Taunton Mind. So it's all one big organisation now. 
uh, and none of the services are cut. They still do everything that they did before and more. Andy, tell me a bit more about the work that you do and um, the kind of the, the services that you offer because you do everything from a helpline and you talked a lot about mentoring, training yeah. and things. So we help about 5,000 people a year in, in the county. Some of that's through telephone support, listening support through the helpline. Um, then we do sort of one-to-one sort of advocacy type support, supporting people with specific issues, perhaps getting their voice heard because they don't don't feel that they've been listened to or, or a service provision hasn't been what it needs to be for somebody. Um, we do some mentoring um, supporting volunteers who've been through the criminal justice system themselves to support other people who are going through that experience. Um, we provide some specialist uh, peer support. So we've got general peer support where we just provide social groups, etc. And then we've got some specialist work that we do around suicide bereavement that has a peer support element to it. Um, right the way through to the sort of challenging stigma and discrimination. So working with people with their own lived experience to go out and be champions to talk to others about their their experiences and that that can be anything from going to a sort of community fair type event through i can recall doing one event at taunton race course on a really wet and windy february and i thought this was going to be a really challenging event and actually we had some most incredible conversations with people and and people were really quite interested to open up i mean what was a mental health charity doing at a race event and people were really interested um other stuff we do, we're trying to expand our provision in some of the areas that we've not had as much historically. So Sedgemoor in particular, we've just opened an office in, in Bridgewater, trying to build up. And very much, um, I think, our philosophy is to try and do things from a grassroots up basis. So if we can see that there's local need, we actually want to work with local volunteers and people who want to develop that. And and we'll listen. So through some of our other project work, we, we work with a couple of other charities on a well-being project. Project. And it's it's engaging with people in their homes, supporting them when perhaps they can't get out to other other services, and what what solutions can we come up for them? But how can we work with other community sector, voluntary sector organisations, and the statutory sector and the wider provision in our community? So it's it's just linking all of those things together most recently um we've started to work a, a project called wiser money around the sort of uh, exmoor area so west somerset goes into north devon and mid devon in fact around debt and mental health and recognizing that actually there's lots of other issues that can cause people to have poor poor mental health and well-being i, I was going to say as well in terms of um you offer training as well you talked about giving training in workplaces um, I, I had a short period away from the bbc for a while and but by the time I came back, um, uh, it was the, the mental health champions, uh, which had never been around before. So those sorts of things, um, I find, you know, encouraging that, you know, workplaces are also yeah. taking this I mean, quite seriously. We, we provide the mental health first aid training um, so we can we provide that both to commercial organisations we provide it for public health in the county and just training up people who are coming into contact through their work with the public where there may be mental health issues but also from a point of view of it's our work colleagues it's our families it's our friends in all aspects of our lives and and that that course is is great for just giving people the confidence quite often people are doing the right things but they're not sure that they're mm. doing the right things and it's just key tools actually like just giving somebody the space to be heard and listened to i was, was going to say listening sometimes um is is something is what we all really want is somebody to listen to mm -hmm. us, but actually more importantly to hear us. And, you know, because listening and hearing quite often are different things. Um, and, um, you know, it's it's actually being heard. You're absolutely right. And, and, and a lot of our work is actually just giving people that space and time to have whatever it is that they want to get off their chest, talk about, have that space to, to do that. Do you find that there um, there is a growing number of younger people in need of, of some sort of help or, you know, listening and support? I think it's it's very much part of the, the new organisation's way of looking. How can we start to provide more support to young people? Clearly, there's a preventative element because if we can support people at an earlier age. And again, that's that's been a key key part because we as one organisation can't provide the full solution to this. So it's working with other 
providers who are perhaps actually in many cases more experienced in working with young people but maybe haven't looked at a sort of mental health aspect or already are looking at mental health but are coming into contact with different groups to those that we may come into contact so yeah it's a it's a key part of what we need to my niece at. is a, a teacher um and she teaches year six um so the last year before they go off to secondary school transitions yeah yes. um and in the last year they've had lots of mindful mindful lessons and things that are, that they have to have mm-hmm. that are built into the curriculum now as well. Yeah, I think lots of schools are now looking at that. They can see the benefits to their pupils. They can see the benefits to the, the whole school community. Um, we do bits and pieces of work within sort of personal social and health education within the secondary system and we also do go out and talk at school assemblies about mm-hmm. well-being, thinking about things like mindfulness, what, you know, what activities do you do on a daily basis mm-hmm. to actually keep yourself well what are the things that we need to guard and protect against because there will be things that we always do in our daily lives which may not be that helpful to our (laughs) mental health but it's absolutely fascinating and you do so much i mean we could talk for all night about the things that you do and and what the services that you offer and i'm sure we'll come back to you again and talk about more things that you that you do let's talk a little bit more david about the fundraising because money is what makes everything go round unfortunately um you know and all these organizations need money um you look for sponsors as well for things that you do don't you Yes, I mean, we're, we, yeah, absolutely. We're looking for. Don't fall. <laughs> the my arms yeah. just collapsed. <laughs> I'm just about to fall off the chair. We have those magic arms that go up and down. Yeah, so yeah, for that. that's okay. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yes, no. On 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 the sponsorship side of life, yes, of course, we're always looking for people to help sponsor us at uh, events like the Driving Challenge uh, to help us offset some of our costs. Um, and the fundraising, going back to the ways of fundraising as well, you were talking about schools. We have schools fundraising for us. Um, there's lots of different ways that people can fundraise, lots of different ideas from you know, non-uniform days at school, um, which, which children have been doing for us, uh, cake sales, fates, uh, theatre performances being put on on our behalf. I mean, just a, a plethora of things that people can do to raise, to raise money, and every little bit helps. And as I said, it all goes back into our services. Um, which is absolutely key. Well, good luck with all of the fundraising and the continuation of all the services that you Thank do you. as well. Um, it, you know, if you're expanding and you're opening like another new office and things like that, that's, that's good. That's good news for people that are going to need those services. If people are listening and they want to know more or they want to find out how they can access those services, say they're not online, can they also, they, they can phone, there's a helpline number? Yeah, so you've got the helpline, which is 01823 276 892. Um, you can get in touch through social media, just search us, or all the website, mindinsomerset.org.uk. And we're always, you know, come into our offices. We're in Taunton, we're in Yeovil, we're in Bridgewater. Happy to receive people through the door and have a chat. Often those are the most meaningful contacts. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Well, good luck with it all. Thanks good very luck much. with the uh, driving challenge. Well, we'll see you there on the 6th uh, of July. Absolutely. Right? And what are you going to drive this year, David? What have you got your eye on? Because well, uh, Andy's already said year. he's got his eye on a combine harvester. Um, so. I think I want to go back to the articulated truck again, actually. <laughs> no, actually, the road sweeper. I didn't do the road sweeper uh, last year. When the, doing yeah, that. still not my pace. Yeah. Uh, guys, thank you very much. It's All been right, lovely to talk to you. Thanks That's uh, David Fields and Andy Pritchard from Mind in Somerset. So don't forget, you can find them online. It is um, mindinsomerset.org.uk. You can call them if you uh, need to as well, 01823 276 892. Google Mind in Somerset. You'll come across them. They're on social media as well. And um, you can get the help that you need and advice. And um, even if it's just somebody just to listen to the concerns that you have as well.